Hi everyone, good morning, this is Dan, welcome to Engo Geist. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. They are greatly appreciated. This is the daily all signs uh, forecast. It is for anyone who sees it whenever you see it. it. I do speak in broad terms, so you need to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. If it doesn't fit, that's okay. It doesn't mean that anything is broken or wrong. It just might mean that you're working on something different at this time. Um, uh, it is originally created for Wednesday the 12th of April, but it's not so set for that day. If you're seeing it on a different date, but it fits your situation, by all means, utilize the reading. Please check out, for those of you that are new, please check out the drop-down menu underneath any of my daily videos. In there are some housekeeping rules, things I want you to think about when utilizing the channel, what decks I'm using, um, how to find me on social media to follow me or contact me for a private reading. Know that I will not contact you to sell you a reading. Also, simple ways to support the channel. You can do so by hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell, leaving me a question or comment, um, or sharing the video out. I greatly appreciate all of that stuff. Um, you will hear me refer back to the Sunday underpinning energy. That is the Sunday reading for the week. It is kind of the energy that is at play in the background in all of this. That video does um, populate in the lower left-hand corner of this video at the end of the video, so you can always check that out too. So let's see what the cards want us to know as I shuffle the clarifiers for the 12th of April. what our card is for the day. So we have the Ten of Cups. Interesting, because yesterday was the Nine of Cups. Isn't he quite sp like spiritually happy? Big old happy laughing Buddha. <laughs> um, it's a nice progression, I'll say, from the Nine to the Ten. The Nines are about personal completion. Tens are about completions with ourselves, the cycle, the situation, those we're involved with. Coming to a happy... Um, uh, conclusion, so to speak. I feel like this is a conclusion for us that feels emotionally um, complete, whole, uh, fulfilling. It may even bring us certainly happiness. This Buddha is sitting here like laughing, right? We might be looking at a situation that we weren't necessarily too happy with at the beginning, but I think we're okay with it now with this Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups is oftentimes like the, you know, the happily ever after card, right? And to me here with Buddha being present, it definitely feels like spiritually we are connected to the situation in a different way, in a way that's more positive, in a way that's more um, optimistic or spiritually centered, right? Um, at peace with how things are. In the Sunday reading, underpinning in the midweek, which should be kind of taking effect, is the Five of Swords, I believe. But that Five of Swords, if I remember the depiction, was a woman in white that looked like she was dancing away from the problem. She wasn't allowing the issues of others to get to her. This Buddha also indicates that to me. Again, he's sort of white in color, which is nice and aligns nicely with the Five of Wands, or the Five of Swords card, but also you know, there's a spirituality, uh, emotional well-being that doesn't allow sort of the garbage, let's say, because the Five of Swords would be about garbage, somebody else's garbage or a situation's garbage, their ideas, their political beliefs, their arguments or debates. It doesn't, it seemed to be sticking today, right? That's the feeling that I get. I almost feel like this Buddha sort of sitting on the sidelines kind of laughing at the, um, idiocy of others, and I don't mean to call others idiots, but, you know, fives are sort of transitory and not necessarily going to be ongoing or overpowering. They may be annoying, but I don't feel like that annoyance or that frustration is getting to us at all. I feel like we're able to kind of see the higher spiritual truth in whatever challenges fate that may be facing us. They could be other people's challenges, and we can maybe have some sort of spiritual wisdom or insight for them that might give them a different take or perspective on this. By all means, if it's us that is dealing with this, 
we're not necessarily allowing it to rock us. It might actually even be bringing us some harmony, some joy, even a little bit of a belly laugh. Um, that is much needed, right? That almost frees us from the situation or allows us to not be tied to the situation in a way that we normally would emotionally. Um, we might be rising above it, disconnecting from it um, spiritually or emotionally in a way that brings us peace and harmony and happiness and allows us to see the bigger picture. And speaking of the bigger picture, our grounding stone for this week is that stone of vision, right? So the vision that the Buddha would have would be this higher perspective, one of uh, joy, contentment, um, not letting, like it's, I, the phrase that's going on in my head right now is don't sweat the small stuff. And the majority of things that we deal with in the day in and the day out are is small stuff, right? And this Buddha seems to know that. Let's go to the Rose Oracle. We have, ooh, I love it, the grandmother. And I like this because he kind of represents the grandfather in a way. Um, this says, remember your roots, perspective, and trust the weavings. So this is definitely an ancestral card, right? Calling upon our ancestors, the truth within our, you know, our lineage, our wisdom within from our forefathers or foremothers, so to speak. I, I really get this sense of Buddha being the masculine, the grandmother being the feminine, this kind of nice balance between the two and the spiritual wisdom that comes from both our ancestors and from within our own spiritual truth, right? Um, aligning that together and using that together. I also love the contrast of the blue and the pink, right? For masculine and feminine, baby boy, baby girl. And, and there is this, there's always this truth at the center of it all that Buddha sort of knows and can laugh about or can look at the situation, whatever the Five of Swords represents. And, and the truth of it that swirls around it, we are protected by this sort of ancient wisdom that maybe resides within us that allows us to attain this joy similar to Buddha, to, how, how do I want to put it, like almost release, let go. Um, uh, we're not able to be sucked in like we used to is the feeling that I get. We're able to feel protected, to feel self-assured, to feel emotionally confident, even spiritually confident, and even find joy in the face of um, whatever may be at, around us challenging us or challenging those around us as we watch it. Let's go to the clarifiers. We have the Eight of Pentacles. So this is the Artisan card. It's about, you know, um, paying attention to the work that we do, bringing our own special take on things, especially with Buddha here. He's seeing things from a, a different perspective, maybe not a perspective that everybody else is looking at it that may be involved in the situation. The Eight of Pentacles can also be about having our um, focus be really attained on the goal or outcome of a project, something that we're putting work in. We're putting our head down and going to work, taking the steps, doing the methodical, you know, next right thing to move ourselves forward. It may not be the fastest of energy, but it is a productive energy. It is a focused energy. It is a grounded energy. And we understand that with this Eight of Pentacles, we had the Nine of Pentacles in the early part of the week in the Sunday reading. With this Eight of Pentacles, we've learned through our past experience um, the steps, the actions, the 3D um, uh, workings that we need to put to good use to move ourselves forward um, step by step, you know, um, action by action, uh, decision by decision. And we're doing so, I think, in a very steady centered sort of way. The next card is the judgment. Judgment is about answering the higher spiritual call. I like seeing this here with Buddha and with the grandmother card because it does feel like we are connected to spirit. Judgment is oftentimes associated with Scorpio um, and it is this, you know, like I gotta say between grandmother and Buddha and this angel, Archangel Gabriel, it feels like we are very connected to spirit today. And in that connection to spirit, we are able to like find joy, feel protected, and um, do the work, do the 3D work that's required of us um, in a way that it just feels not unstoppable, but 
it just feels like we're focused. We're, we're not letting the small things get in the way. We're looking at the bigger picture and we're listening to a higher calling that resounds from within us, right? The higher calling of spirit, that um, answer. And then here's the last card, which is the Hierophant. Speaking of spiritual wisdom, the Hierophant is Taurian energy which is earth sign energy, right? He's the pillar card, but he's also about higher spiritual wisdom. He's about institutions, societal norms, but also like weaving in the spiritual strength and awareness that he has and where that fits into the day-to-day -day world, into the 3D world. With judgment being here, and I'll say this, you know, Scorpio and Taurus are very, um, complementary. It's water and earth coming together, right? It's the two signs. They're uh, complementary signs. They're working together for us to take our higher spiritual knowledge and ground it into our day-to-day -day work in a very profound and sort of productive way. So pay attention to the inclinations or the signs that we're getting from within ourselves or from the maybe the environment around us. And I mean more the spiritual signs, you know, the synchronicities, the answers that align not only from the environment around us spiritually that are coming to us, but they also align with us at our own personal spiritual awareness or knowing. And then we're able to um, allow that to strengthen us, to allow us to make decisions and move forward. And we are definitely, definitely, I'm going to say this with Buddha, the grandmother, and the angel, it's like we're definitely supported by something otherworldly or outside of ourselves. We can feel that support or we should be able to tap into it. Now let's look to the grounding stone. And the grounding stone is nature. So for me, this is our true nature. This is our true spiritual nature. This is about, you know, we had the word honor yesterday and the day before that was the grounding stone was remember. This is about drawing upon that true spiritual wisdom, that ancient wisdom of our ancestors, the wisdom of our guides, the wisdom of our higher self, and allowing that to inform us, not only spiritually, but also emotionally as we move through the day. It should bring our day-to-day -day work day, or the things that we put into effect today, it should infuse that with a, uh, like a certain, I want to say like otherworldly power, or um, it's almost like this Eight of Pentacles is, all of this sort of spirituality surrounding this Eight of Pentacles says to me that whatever we do today, however menial or task-oriented it seems, it's all imbued with this higher connectivity that is extremely beneficial for us, that um, imbues us with a sort of a spiritual strength or, um, uh, it's going to, like I want to say, it's going to propel us forward. And the things that we do day to day may come to us a little bit more effortlessly, uh, with a little bit more joy, with a little bit more peace, with a little bit more of emotional contentment. And we're going to feel supported in this energy. This energy is, to me, with the nature stone there, our true nature. Nature also indicates connecting to the environment around us and looking for signs and sinks or synchronicities that the environment gives us also that shows us that we are in alignment. There is an opportunity here to see that alignment, embrace that alignment, find joy in that alignment, and really put that alignment to good use on the projects or um, work that we're doing um, today. I hope that makes sense. That is your reading today, guys. Please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Leave me a question or comment and um, share the video out. Tune in tomorrow and let's see how this energy evolves. All right, take care. Bye-bye.